Hello, welcome to the 2021 Black Femme Supremacy Film Fest. I'm Scott Patterson, and I'll be moderating your post-screening filmmaker panel. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Akeen, uh, Dubois Akeen, an amazing director and choreographer. Uh, he will be discussing his film, Driving While Black. Hello, Dubois. How are you doing? Good day, sir. I'm well. I'm well. And you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited. Um, I've, this is my second time uh, seeing this film. It's a wonderful film. Uh, I am a composer and a pianist, and um, I, my wife and I, we run a company here uh, in Baltimore called Afro House, and we're actually in the middle of an opera right now, and a film, and I'm, I'm super excited, super excited to uh, have this conversation with you. Um, yeah, so let's jump right on in, if you don't mind. Yeah, 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 let's do it. I love it. Uh, so the subject matter uh, really, really dives into the historical and present day trauma experienced with experienced by black people dealing with the racist system yeah. um, that manifests itself all too often um, um, in, in everyday things like driving. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, uh, and, and I just love, I love that. I just wanted to know what, what brought you to the subject matter? Um, how did this come about? Um, and uh, yeah, can you speak more on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, first, uh, shout out to uh, Black Film Fest and uh, the incredible work that they're doing and, um, and, and you for, for hosting this conversation. And um, yeah, it's an honor to be here. So um, yeah, so my wife, like you and your wife, we run a production company, Creative Agency. And through the agency, um, you know, we've been fortunate to work with a lot of diff in a lot of different sectors. So fashion, film, you know, the performing arts. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was still a touring artist with the Contemporary Dance Company, I was commissioned to choreograph and perform for Charlie Parker's Yardbird in Arizona for an opera. It was like a jazz opera. And I met this incredible soprano, uh, Karen Slack. And um, she was playing the mother of Charlie Parker, mm -hmm. Addie. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I, I don't know if I was lagging, but... Uh, I met Karen Slack and um, and my wife came and saw the opera in Arizona and then she met Karen Slack. And so we became this like little trifecta of like dreamers. And we're like, oh, we have to work together again. We have to work together again. We kept trying to do stuff like, oh, we should do a fashion spread. We should do this, we should do that. And I think um, Urban Arias had approached Karen about doing DWB hmm. um, and Karen, <laughs> she always tells the story that she said to uh, Bob, who's the who's the artistic director. I will not do this if you can't bring on Dubois and Camry as a as a nice. team. And so, um, nice. yeah, so they brought us on, and and we were fortunate enough to bring on our team and, and produce the project. So the subject matter, to answer your question more specifically, the subject matter, uh, the language the the framework in terms of the composition was already there um and it was our uh charge to look at it and see how we could visually through film through dance through fashion um help elevate the story help to bring out and highlight some of the nuance that is a part mm -hmm. of the uh the original composition so we didn't add any language or any music it's all original score um, nice. which was in some ways a challenge, but a beautiful one. And so our work was, how can we expand, elevate, reimagine, um, contort, uh, transfigure this language through visual and movement and fashion uh, elements um, to better tell the story or, or to tell the story through a different lens. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, I was really, uh, blown away, you know, uh, with the, I guess, I don't know any other word to call it, but the dance chorus, I would say, you, you know, yeah. uh, you, you know, I was, I was just thinking like, um, you know, in opera, you know, there's, there's a lot of Greek elements sometimes, you know, um, and, and they seem to be the, the, the consciousness or the uh, subconsciousness, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I was wondering, you know, Hopefully, you know, I didn't say too much. If, if you could speak 
on that. And and also, um, you know, you're you're a choreographer, a uh, dancer. So like, um, yeah, you know, yeah. Can you speak more on like just just your expression through that? Yeah. Um, man, there's so many ways to come at the question. I think. Right. Shout out to the dancers, uh, Yaman Brown, yes. Nicole Morris, and Tweet K, uh, brilliant artists um, in their own right. And um, I was so lucky to be able to bring them onto this project. Um, for me, movement uh, choreography is, is one of my first languages. Hmm. Uh, I see the world in choreography. Like I live in New York City <laughs> and so like even, you know, moving through the city, yes. uh, you know, it's all like one big dance for me, you know what I mean? And so um, I, I rarely work on a project, whether in fashion and film, uh, where there is not a movement element, if I'm in leadership in any way. Right. Um, and, you know, before I, be before I um, was professionally working in film in this way as a director, producer, writer, I was a choreographer, dancer. Um, you know, and singing and stuff. So, um, yeah, movement is always, for me, a mode. It's always a a, a, a storytelling uh, tool. Yeah. Uh, so I knew that I knew that coming into this project that it would it it was it was begging in in the way that I experienced it, it was begging for movement because of how the score is set up. It's kind of in these um, vignettes. You know, it feels mm -hmm. episodic. It feels um kind of fragmented in ways and so for me movement uh was a way to help kind of thread some of those things together and explore maybe some of the emotional content without having to go there dramatically in terms of the acting because right. um, i didn't want to make a black trauma film and i told them you know the the producing company is a majority white-led producing company all the leadership is white and so even when we came into working on this film i was like I refuse to make a trauma piece. Um, I think that black pain and, and the subject matter is what it is and we can't manipulate the subject matter, but we have, I have to find a way to explore these ideas, um, you know, so that I'm not just perpetuating that narrative. Um, so dance for me became a way to kind of help facilitate that mm. um, reimagining of, of pain and, and trial. Uh, yeah, and 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 I my movement language is, you know, I grew up in the church, uh, you know, liturgical dance, and then at nineteen I started formally training in ballet and modern, and then I grew up, you know, I, I was always into like street dance. I moved to New York and I was dancing house, and you know, so all of my movement is kind of very um, a fusion of all of those experiences, and I and I think of dance as movement more than like. And these are the five steps we're gonna do. Like right. even yeah. how I'm gesturing, you know, yeah. we even built one section and I'll round this out, but we built one section of the choreography from actual gesture that Karen was doing when she was talking. So there's a section where she's they're in the car, she's sitting, and there are three dancers um sitting in this imagined car with her. And all of that beginning movement came out of her body. And so then I just directed the dancers to man and, and we manipulated and amplified and scaled the movement. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my approach as a choreographer. Oh man, that's really that's really cool, man. Really, thank you for um, one shouting out the your the dancers um, who were just beautiful um, in their storytelling as well. Um, I think we might have lost uh, Dubois for a second. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, okay, we're back. Okay, great. Uh, you said something, um, man, that I, 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 I gotta say, talk about. You know, I think it's worth talking. You know, um, trauma. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, the first time I saw it was a part of um, in the the Black Opera um, uh, conference. Um, and it was seen with four other, three, three or four other um, operas. And one thing um, all the operas had in common was trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, you know, I, I, I think it's really interesting that, um, you know, more and more um, artists are starting to 
take take on opera and um, yeah. claim opera for themselves. Um, I personally believe that film is a is is a is a platform for opera that can be for yeah. for black people and for black artists and black composers and black makers. I really yeah. believe that. Um, you know, but I you know pushing beyond trauma. Yeah. You know, and not and not and not leaving trauma. You can't leave we can't leave who that is a part of who we are, you know, but but like our storytelling is is just interesting that um uh, so much um of our storytelling and across mediums, you know, maybe film, dance, yeah. television, you know, it we're always brought right back to our trauma. You yeah. go to Netflix and you look at the black section, it's yeah. it's all civil rights, <laughs> you know, you know, or you know, and you know, nothing against Netflix or anything like that. Um, hope I didn't get anyone in trouble. But <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so you know, from you know, just to speak personally, um, Right now, um, Afro House. I come. We're 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 making a screenplay. We're writing a screenplay for an Afrofuturistic opera uh, film, uh, right. and uh, you know we're really trying to leave leave um, yeah. the galaxy. Yeah. You know we're really trying to you know, and that's why I really appreciate um, your work. You know, n not just this piece, but you know outside of this piece. You know, just the idea of creating new black narratives. Yeah. So, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, and it's, you know, I, I don't know what else I could say about that. But, yeah, yeah. you know. No, I, I love that you highlight that. And I, I tell you, literally when I initially heard the score, um, Karen sent it to us. And initially she said, listen to it. Tell me what you think. Um, and my immediate response was, I don't know what to do with this. And it was really my my wife, Camry, her ability to, to imagine beyond what was being sang and, mm. and presented on the screen in that, in that initial moment. Um, you know, she was like, I know this woman. You know, we have a daughter. She's a mother. She's a Black woman in the world. Mm. And so we started talking about, you know, not making this some like slave, you know, like enslaved looking woman, you know, mm. kind of broken down. But yeah. like, this is a modern woman. This is our mother, our aunt, our sister, it's a mm. woman we see in our daily life who's still being faced with these challenges, but is finding something else, is, is imagining her her way out of it, is is reframing her world through whatever coping mechanism she has to her, uh, dis you know, disposal. And so, um, you know, I, I think that, and I always try to credit and really name that because I think that for me, it, it felt really stifling initially because mm. they did feel like, man, am I signing up to do another black trauma piece? But wow. I think it gets to a larger point um, where the conversation, you said it so beautifully, the conversation really is about how are we how are we telling our own stories had i you know had we had the opportunity to bend some of the language or mm. change some of the scenes or rewrite certain things of course we would have that would have been amazing but in honor of what the composer and the librettist did and not wanting to manipulate that yeah, we have yeah. to find other ways to do it so i think it's important for black people and i think i say all the time opera is ripened for innovation, yes, it's hungry yeah. for something else, yes. and I think that black people telling love stories, black people telling, you know, our our own uh, mythologies, you know what I mean, our own superheroes. Yes. Um, the more we can write and tell those stories, the the better, uh, and, and that's what's going to help us, kind of, uh, like you said, not as not ignore those realities of trauma, but transcend them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and take them with us into the new, yeah. the, the future, you know, um, and and be changed in the future. Yeah, you know, we, not to go into the future, carrying and mm -hmm. being, um, being being uh, 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 engulfed by those traumas and and you know, but 
they they're they of course they're who they make us who we are. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I was gonna also say, you know, you know, to your point, I really appreciated the setting. Um, uh, you know, and and yes, you, you know, you could have very easily <laughs> I, I mean put put the setting and, and you know because because film is everything right is it's 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 the 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 set it's the lighting it's the props it's the actor so you know you could have very easily um uh, uh the, this the mother in anywhere and, and, and really could have played up on that drama you, you know but but i really appreciated that um the the setting was a room it was a room in her home um it it was like you say in every not in every day but it was my aunt's room you know it was it's my mom's room it's my sister's room it's it's uh it it and and it didn't take away um or or place me in a place of trauma i didn't we didn't walk into the room traumatized by the room you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's, and it's, and I really, it's one of the things I appreciate about performance in general, uh, may it be on the stage, may it be in film, is that you create, uh, as the creators, as a creative, creative team, you create the world. Yeah. You know, and, and that is a huge part of the storytelling. You yeah. know, what is, what is she wearing? You know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, what is she, where, where, where is she sitting on? You know? Um, yeah. Uh, are there holes in the ceiling? <laughs> you know, just you, you know, you know, um, you know, and 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 we see so much. Uh, you know, we keep coming back to the word trauma. We see so much of that. Um, yeah. So I appreciate what, what you did. Now, I definitely have the question. I gotta ask you, brother. <laughs> uh, you know, the scene where where uh, uh, Karen uh, and um, the mother. Is singing in the red dress, the blonde wig, uh, Eurocentric, uh, 20th century. I'm, I'm just throwing out a century. Don't, yeah, I'm not a historian, but yeah, what was that? What was that choice? Talk about that. Yeah, and, and before, and, and yes, and this will segue, but I want to shout out the art department. Uh, my wife was the art director um, oh. for the for the entire. So when you're talking about scene and setting and you know production design, like she she visioned that whole space um, brilliantly with her team, and 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 costume was done by Nikki Bosch, who's just mm -hmm. like a freaking legend. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, yeah. So the red dress, everybody talks about the red dress and and the white wig or the blonde wig, um, and and it was very. Um, intentional that we that we chose that look okay. for me i it, it's actually the one look that i was most clear about everything else was like art art department or <laughs> or you know my um uh, art director my wife um they kind of like steered the ship in all the other ways you know as far as how the room looks and stuff but for me i, I had this clear image of this this black woman in this huge gown, I didn't know what color or anything, but I knew that it was a big gown, uh, you know, reminiscent of this very Eurocentric, typically Eurocentric um, aesthetic. And for me, it was about, um, it, and I, I don't actually, after this, I'm gonna try not to say trauma in this interview <laughs> again. I know, right? We said about 800 but, times. But yeah. it, was about, it was about taking the lowest moments mm -hmm. in the opera, the most emotionally taxing moments in the opera and elevating them um, and, and showing the real disembodiment that can happen with Black pain. Like our having to dress up and perform our pain, hmm. um, even in certain spaces, um, or, or having to beauty or having to dial back, you know, I can't get too loud in the business meeting. I can't get too boisterous in my excitement because I don't want to be a threat or I don't want to appear. Or I don't want to. So it was about turning the, the, the mirror back on the audience and asking the questions like, why, why even do you have question about this black woman in this costume? Hmm. Because, because there are white people in culture right now, black fishing, and we don't have any questions about it. You know what I mean? They, they're walking around with black aesthetic, mm -hmm. black 
you know, if if we're wanting to use that kind of like dichotomous language, yeah, you know, yeah. racialized linguistics, it, it's like white people are taking on blackness all the time um, for 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 play, for art, for advancement, whatever you want to, you know, especially in the kind of culture that we live in now. And so for us, it was about can this black woman, this black mother take this on and be, and, and be seen? Like, will this help them see her? Will this help them see her pain, identify with her loss, identify with her fears? Um, and then again, like um, these quintessential, it was also about using these quintessential, like when you see that white wig, you know what that is. When you see yeah. that tutu, you know what that is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, it, was about, mm -hmm. it was about using these quintessentially Eurocentric images um, and flipping them on their heads and asking something about Afrofuturism. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm of the radical belief that everybody was Black, you know, that we all come from Africa. So yeah. if that be the case, then whiteness is actually, or, 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 or white people, or, you know, Europe, e even in its um, existence, is somewhat a, a derivative down the line, down the timeline of this circular future history that we live in hmm. of, of what was a Black woman, the Eve gene, you know what I mean? So if we want to play with some of those kind of radical ideas, which I'm not afraid of, then yeah. something about Eurocentric is, is actually Blackness derived over time. Hmm. Um, so yeah. Oh man, thank you, thank you for that, thank you for that. Um, you know, you know, uh, for me, the question comes um, be because because I I am in um, the arts, and uh, as you know, uh, the performing arts, m those spaces, those institutions, mm -hmm. are white institutions um, that we as as um, people of color as black people are often trying to contort ourselves um, to get in. Yeah. Um, you, you know, um, we are taking on trauma that we don't need to be performative with that trauma. Yeah. You, you know, um, and, and, you know, so for me, I, I had to ask the question because I'm like, um, is that the, is that what the commentary is? You know, mm -hmm. is it what you know? Was it um, so often we we have to put on those blonde wigs, and and you know I, I have you know by doing opera I work with a lot of black opera singers and mm -hmm. um, you know and they are often in roles th that were not made for them. It was yeah. they were not made for their bodies. Yeah, you know, um, so so they're being fit into these wigs and to these uh, these dresses and these costumes and this and and um, you know there there is joy to be a part of something so amazing and so great mm -hmm. and, and music that they love, but then there's also I there's also a little pain yeah. of what it took to to get there. So you know uh, that's what brought me to that question. Mm. Uh, but thank you, thank you for um, your amazing answer. Uh, I, now I got to geek out, man. I got to get some production stuff in, man. You know, um, again, you know, uh, I'm in the process of of creating um, our our film here in Baltimore, and, and so from the Rudy to the Tootie, you know, I, I you, you know, like Scott, what are you doing, man? I'm the director. I'm the guy that sweeps the flow. I'm, you know, everything. So production. Oh, yeah. Lighting, all of that stuff. I'm, I'm every, from the aesthetic, music, everything. Uh, I'm really excited about. So, the biggest thing with opera um, that I find when I'm working with opera singers, they don't want no microphones. They don't want uh, man. They, they, I just want to sing. Yeah. My voice will carry. Now, don't put yeah. a microphone on me. Um, so, in film, you know, there comes the question of, you know, for me that I wanted to ask you as a director yeah. is like. The choice of overdubbing, mm -hmm. and or, or not in live, you know, you know, can just a, this is a, just a total geek out production question. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Um, yeah, I think that you know, a lot of times those kinds of things come down to logistics. Like, what's the yeah. budget? You know, mm. uh, 
about what's the capacity, what's our timeline. We had three, we shot this entire film in three days. Wow. Um, so we knew going in, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, where there are already a lot of kind of restrictions around availability, people's timelines to be able to be in one place and film and get COVID tests, all these things considered, it became clear early on because we were in pre-production for about six months, almost to a year uh, leading up to this three-day shoot. We knew that um, putting the burden on Karen in these um, spaces to try to replicate and, and, and repeat and sing, you know, 12-hour mm -hmm. days from morning to night, uh, this, this repertoire, which isn't so challenging in terms of scale, like it's not like super high, super low, like it's, it's moderate in terms of um, its challenge vocally, but there's a lot of like notes come out of nowhere. It's not right. very, um, there's not a lot of tempo and like good doom, good doom, good doom, the singer comes in, you know, it's right, like right, right. a random flutter here and then a bop, bop, bop there, you know? Right, right, right. So we knew that just time-wise, um, it would it would save us if we could pre-record it. And then logistically budget budgeting sound men for film is like you're gonna pay for that, you know what I mean? Yeah. For a good, good sound man. Um, especially when you're talking about recording opera and then instrumentation, it, it's uh, you know, too instrumentless. So yeah, so for us it was more logistical. Um, and also okay. I think while people are, you know, do a lot of pushback with the mic voice, the, the unamplified voice and, and that thing. I think that I think of opera in its original uh, linguistic meaning, which is all all of the work, like all of the elements of art making. Mm. Um, yes. So I think that there are more things that I would consider opera mm. that maybe the, the classical opera community might not look at and think this is opera. So mm. I had no, um, I had no question about Oh, if, if we amplify the voices, it's still opera. I was like, we need to we need to pre-record this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And this is just gonna help us logistically. So yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you for thank you for that. That was a that was totally a personal question. It probably <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, okay. So you know, I wanted to um ask the question. Um uh, you know, like I told you before, my wife, Felicia, and I, we um, we started Afro House and we run this business um, and, and we work together. And, I, you know, you know, it's it's a wonderful, wonderful collaboration, a wonderful thing. It is also incredibly difficult. <laughs> you know, I mean, good Lord, we 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 got boy, we went, we got into it over a budget thing the other day. Boy, I tell you what, I wanted to spend, spend, spend. She was like, no, no, no. But anyway, that's that's some personal stuff. I'm gonna hear about it later. But you know, I wanted to ask you, man. Um, tell tell us about your collaboration. You know, with your with your wife and totally. You know, just I mean, you don't have to get too personal and get yourself in trouble. And like I yeah, just did, yeah, but you know, ah. Uh, Man, um, so we've had Akeem Brand um, since 2017, and my wife actually founded the company. Mm -hmm. um, and it started off as really specifically a fashion company. Like she was doing these custom designs. Um, and so that was kind of the big thing. And then after that, we started to imagine, you know, this kind of blog platform and there was like some merch. And so it was like this niche kind of like cult following Mm -hmm. you know, millennial thing. And yeah. then, it, you know, it just kept developing. And then I was like, well, I could, you know, sh we started to funnel the work that I was doing through it, through our King brand as kind of an agency, like a boutique agency. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then we got Nike as a client. And then we started like, you know, and then it just kind of snowballed and grew and grew and grew. And then I started working in film and then I got this contract to be a producer and we did these nine, nine films. And, you know, so things kind of grew from there. But our our collaborative work uh, as a husband and wife team is almost inevitable. Like even when we were um, courting or dating, uh, you know, when we were young, like 19, 20, we were always working together. We were always thinking about, oh, we should do this conference or we should do this thing together. So work is a big part of our love language. 
language. Yeah. Um, I joke sometimes like working is a love language for mm. us, you know, like is that six love language. Um, and, and that doesn't mean it's without challenge. Like even with BWB, we face some real challenges, even around kind of artistic decisions. Like she had a real clear vision for how she wanted opening credits to happen. And I was like, ah, I don't like it. I want to <laughs> and, uh, you know, or like costuming decisions or, yes. uh, you know, just different things because she's a full blown creative in her own right. right. She's also a scientist and like thinks just very differently than me. And I'm like, you know, to the moon and in the ether. And she's like, that doesn't make sense, you know? Yes. So I think that, um, you know, it has its challenges, but I think it's absolutely revolutionary and I think it's beautiful. And I think that um, as a black couple, black love for me is already revolutionary, I think right. in general. Right. Um, so I think that to, to then transcend not even transcend to allow ourselves to manifest in these other ways is really kind of a natural, um, organic expression. I think that Black men and women, even from the beginning of you know being brought over as enslaved peoples, were having to work together until yep. they were stripped away from each other. So this 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 inclination, this ancestral activation to build something mm -hmm. beyond just the family unit is a part of what it means to be black and mm -hmm. i think that if folks tap into that and we've been fortunate to tap into it uh, in a healthy way um you know the the, the sky's the limit there is no limit really right in right how, in how you can kind of manifest so. yeah no thank you for that yeah i i feel i feel the same way um you know my wife and i we we work hard, we we fight hard, we love hard, yeah. you know, and through all of that hard, some beautiful things, yeah. um, you know, always come through. And uh, I, I can't imagine anyone else that I could fight hard or, or, or work hard and, and, and make beautiful things with, you know. Yeah, I, I tell my wife all the time, like, look, there is definitely a better artistic director out there. <laughs> yes, you, you can find that person. They will be great. They will do all the things I do. Don't know how to do it would be better, but man, it'll be boring. Yeah, I'm at least exciting. Exactly. 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 <laughs> and, it, and she's like, vice versa. <laughs> I love you know, so that's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. It, it, you know, it was, it was it's so wonderful uh, talking to you. Uh, you know, again, uh, Driving Wild Black is, is an amazing film. Congratulations to you and Camry and your entire your entire team team yeah. uh creative team and um uh urban arias uh, for producing it um you know when is the next the, my last question when is the next opera where's the next opera film man i don't know like hire me you know hire tell tell all the opera singers and companies out there let's make work you know um because i'm, right. I'm fairly be careful what you ask for now be careful what I you know. ask for <laughs> I'm fairly new to the opera space. You know, my wife and I both, uh, like we're three years in, you know, because uh, most of our work has been mm -hmm. kind of in other spaces. But I, I, again, I love opera. I think it's ripened for innovation. I approach it with a uh, clear intention to disrupt it. Um, yes. So if folks are interested in working in that way, I'm a, I'm 100% down. Um, so I, I don't know yet, but hopefully it's sooner than later, for sure. Well, thank you. And on that note, thank you for watching, everyone. And be sure to check out all of the other films at this year's Black Film Supremacy Film Fest. Uh, we want to thank our guest, uh, Dubois Akeen, uh, amazing uh, a filmmaker, director, choreographer, and, and his entire team, his wife, Camry. Um, and, you know, I just I, I wish you peace and blessings and and just just, you know, beautiful, more beautiful things to come your way. Um, this uh, more info about the Black Film Supremacy Film Fest can be found at bfsfilmfest.com. We want to thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Patterson, and we'll see you and, and stay tuned.